And the first thing is, you know, for in soybeans uh, is bollworm. You know, that's our number one pest. That's the biggest yield getter that we have. And that's the one that we really want to concentrate on. I'm getting a lot of calls about three cornered alfalfa hoppers and bean leaf beetles and all that kind of stuff, you know. And and obviously we, you know, we we want to be concerned a little bit about those secondary, what I call secondary or occasional pests. But make no mistake about it, uh, the big boys are moving into the soybeans right now. If you have early planted beans planted in, in late March, early April, uh, stink bugs are really beginning to build in those in those fields right now and and it's uh, it's very fast it, it it happens you know you're sweeping one week and you're get, catching three to four per 25 sweeps and then it jumps up in a week to 15 to 25 per 25 sweeps and that's what we're seeing right now so I encourage you uh, to get out there and check those early planted beans right now for developing stink bug levels uh, you know, our threshold is very simple. Uh, you know, whether it's bollworms in soybeans or stink bugs, our threshold is nine per 25, and that's based on a lot of work that we've done in the past several years right here on the station and at Mariana and all across Arkansas. And I feel very comfortable telling you that those recommendations will keep you out of trouble and they'll maintain your yield potential and, and uh, and do what they need to do for you to, to keep pest at a, a level that they're not gonna cause you any yield loss or quality loss or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I forgot to turn my telephone on. Uh, the bollworm deal, uh, this, is a good, this is a good comparison right here. You see the field over here to my left? Uh, the beans are lapped up. They're in, in fact, they're so thick they're starting to lodge and fall down a little bit. And then we got this field here behind us where it's blooming. They're just now starting to bloom and I can see the ground down the middle. Those are the fields that bollworms really like. And all our lips really like fields in this situation where we're starting to bloom. And if I can see the ground at the edge of the field looking down the row, then those are candidates for the worst bowworm pressure out there. So those are the ones that you really wanna key on right now with the bowworm population that we have out there. Uh, these are the fields that are having the highest levels of, of bowworms. And I'm not gonna tell you that you won't get bowworms in that field over there, but it certainly won't be to the magnitude that you'll see them in a field just like this one behind me. So keep that in mind. These are the fields that you really wanna key on on the bowworms. And, and I'm going to, you know, I made a recommendation early on this year about, you know, products and what to use in this situation. We've been having, in the past couple of years, been having problems with our pyrethroids, getting control of bollworms. Uh, they're just not working like they used to. It used to be our standard and the thing that we use. We're, we're transitioning into some products that... that uh, not only provide a, a higher level of control, but they also don't impact our beneficials. Because the, the impact, the, in, the, the beneficial insects out here are gonna do more for you than, a, than an insecticide application ever will. And letting those insects work for us and, and take control of those worm populations can do more for us than, than any insecticide application that we could make. So I'm gonna spray something that's not gonna disrupt that that beneficial insect population out there. Uh, you know, Belt came on the market last year and, and there's probably nobody here that, that grows soybeans that didn't use Belt on their soybeans last year and it did an excellent job for us. And that two ounce rate, uh, I don't think you can beat it. You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to, to recommend the two ounce rate. I, I put Phil's out, uh, test out last year and got 30, 30 days plus with two ounces, you know, so that's with a ground application and and, uh, and 10 gallons of uh, water by volume or per acre. And so I feel real comfortable with that rate and that's what I'd recommend to you. There's some other products like Steward and Tracer that also will, will give you good control in those situations. And, and they all are, are easy on beneficial. So those are the kind of products, if you get in this situation like this field behind me and, and you start seeing bollworm numbers, and I know it's here because I've got a, a couple of tests just up the road about five or six miles from here. So I know that we got bollworms in these soybeans like this right now. They're not in every field. 
it's not every field this and and it's a case by case field by field situation not all the fields are going to be at treatment level we got so many beneficials out here in a lot of cases that they're keeping those worms below treatment level and we need to continue to let them work now when the stink bugs come in uh, you know, you're pretty much stuck with orthene or a pyrethroid and those are going to disrupt your beneficials. Uh, they're going to remove them from the field and that opens the door. And what we got out here right now are, are loopers. Soybean loopers uh, are resistant to pyrethroids. And if you spray a pyrethroid on this field, you remove that, the beneficials and the loopers blow up. So we don't want to do that if we can avoid it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do if stink bugs are building. So keep an eye out for the loopers because they're certainly on the way. But right now our research is, is concentrating. We're still trying to make three-cornered alfalfa hoppers a pest. Uh, we can't seem to make it happen. You know, we go up six times threshold, eight times threshold, and I can't make any yield, see any yield differences uh, where we put cages out and, and, and infest at huge levels. And so I'm getting a lot of calls about three corners because they are blowing up, but I'm not going to spray for them. I'm not going to spend my money on three cornered alfalfa hoppers because I don't think they're a pest. I don't think they cause that much yield loss. And when you spray for them, you just open the door for all those other pests. So keep that in mind as you get into this, to this uh, time of year. Uh, Deck tees, that's another one that a lot of people like to spray for, and I've tried and tried to make a pest out of that insect, and I can't do it. We got a lot of those out here right now. They tunnel in the main stem. You break that stem open, look inside, and they look terrible, but I can't, I can't show any yield loss with those. So, you know, just what I'm, my point is, try to make applications that are gonna return your investment. You know, that's what we wanna do. When we spray an insecticide, we're trying to make money off that. We're not trying to just kill bugs. It ain't, it's not about killing insects. Uh, it's about making money at the end of the year, and that's what we're trying to do with the recommendations that we make. We're working on our bollworm threshold uh, a little more because the price of beans is so good. You know, when, when you got thresholds, you don't, you don't keep a static threshold on something. When the price goes up, you know, the value is greater. Uh, you've got to reinvestigate your thresholds and look at that. So we're spending a lot of time in soybeans looking at that kind of stuff and, and looking at all the new products that are out there. So we got a lot of soybean work that's going on right now, uh, not only here on this station, but across the state. Uh, one other thing about sampling, you know, this is my, this is what, this is my tool. And, and, and if you don't have one, uh, We've had scout schools this year all over the state and the, and the Soybean Association was, uh, Arkansas Soybean Association was gracious enough to provide nets for me to hand out at every uh, school that we do. If you don't have a sweep net, I still got a few extra. And if you promise you'll use it, I'll give you a free net. How about that? <laughs> Can't beat that, can you? It's, it's not free, it's from the Soybean Association and from the checkoff funds that they provide that, that all you growers uh, commit to. So we're appreciative of them allowing us to educate everybody and, and bring this, uh, these sweep nets out and get them out in your hands and, and let you uh, check your beans. So.